Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And Wargaming have just recently buffed the mid-tier British heavy tanks, and so I thought I'd dip into them and see if they're actually worth playing now. So firstly, Wargaming have addressed the Churchill 1. This is a classic tier 5 British heavy tank inside the game. Now, it's interesting that while they've changed the tier 5, the 6, and the 7, I really had no problems with these vehicles, although if I'm honest, I kind of played them when they were released into the game, at least the majority of battles that I played in them uh, back in 2012. Uh, so I guess we're talking about 11 years ago. Yeah, I think the uh, the meta has kind of shifted a lot in the last 11 years, right? And so maybe I don't really have a good idea of, of how they felt recently. And so I'm excited to be able to see how they feel now with the buffs. Um, whether they needed it or not, I guess it's not for me to... To decide, I'd have to go and take a look at the overall statistics of the tanks. Okay, so what have Wargaming done to the Churchill? Well, they've improved its aim time from 2.3 seconds to 2.1 seconds. They've improved the accuracy by 0.01 and its dispersion when moving from 0.2 and when turning the hull at 0.2 to 0.18. So better gun handling there as well. All right, so interestingly, the Churchill was always reasonably fast. Uh, its top speed limit is 25.7. That was before the patch, and that's after the patch as well. Well, can we have an improved the speed of this tank? And so it actually gets around half decently when you snap a turbo on this vehicle. You're going to be up to roughly about 30 kilometers an hour, or 29.7 if we're being pedantic within that regard. And the Churchill, it just looks absolutely awesome to me. Might be, I might be a little bit biased because I'm British, of course. I love the way that the tracks go over the hull. It just makes it look awesome. When Wargaming added in this kind of like new look into World of Tanks with the track physics and all of the new graphics, I think every time I play the Churchill, I'm just like, wow, this game looks cool. Especially when you're playing in a high frame rate. I'm playing 120 frames a second at the moment, which is going to be halved for the video. But uh, yeah, if any of you do have the opportunity to get one of those high refresh rate monitors, get the Churchill. The tracks look awesome on it, especially if you start to go like slowly like this. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Anyway, I digress. I need to focus on what's at hand, and that is hopefully being able to uh, play this new revamped Mountain Pass map. That's right. Wargaming have also changed quite a lot of the maps inside the game, and as you can see here, this one is now very different. What a gun. Love these kind of low-tier British guns. Rapid firing, relatively good accuracy, and is that a T-3485 firing an HE shell at me? We track the Stug. Does he have a repair kit? Yes, he does. Does he have another repair kit? Well, He's going to need more than a repair kit to buff out that tank destruction inside the garage. What's this AMX doing? Interesting how Wargaming have changed this position so much. Uh, it's now pretty much just like a, a heavy kind of grindy fight. And while it is still important to have some pressure in the middle and down towards the south so that the heavies don't get shot in the side as they're progressing, um, it's definitely a, a lot more opportunity to attack your opponents and to, to go along this way. I do worry a little bit, all in all, with some of the changes that Wargaming have made. They do feel as if now it's kind of just how friendly do Wargaming want to make the game for heavy tanks at the expense of all of kind of like the tight tank destroyers and the light tanks being able to get their ambush shots. Although I'd say Wargaming have probably given a few tank destroyer positions as we can see up there. So one of the real downsides to the Churchill, for example, is that the tank, uh, the tracks go over the hull. And while it looks cool, it's not actually great for a uh, being tracked and damaged at the same time. So what it means is that if somebody shoots you in the tracks and they go through into the armor of the hull above the tracks, not only can they lock you in place, they can also uh, damage you at the same time, which is diabolical. Wow, this game's going good, isn't it? I love it, I love it, I love it. Bring it on, you weasels. The, Brit the British heavies are here, the British mid-tier heavies. I can't believe how easily those players got jammed in that position, but I guess that's what they were trying to go for. Okay, so in this kind of a situation, I think I need to turn around. Like, I've got two options. One is that I plow on towards the enemy base. If I plow on towards the enemy base and they take my base first, I lose. However, if I go back to my base and I secure my base, there's no way I can lose, at least for the next 11 minutes of the game, if that makes sense. So it's always a tricky decision as to whether you should push on or whether you should pull back when you're in a very slow tank like this if you don't see that your team is also helping you. This is a nightmare situation to have an AC4 experimental above me here. Luckily, we managed to put one shell in. Oh, luckily my turret armor held up. This thing only uses a Cromwell turret. It's not a great turret at all. But I tell you what, this guy also doesn't have a very good turret. 
Why would he not shoot me? Why would he go for... I guess he's going for the low health tanks, and he just thought that maybe the Churchill won't shoot him. This has a very pokey gun. This tank, when you think about it, is pretty much a Cromwell with a better hull. Um, oh, I've got to, I've got to watch out. That T forty is going to kick my butt otherwise. Oh, he got my engine. In a bit of trouble. Oh, big moment here. Big moment here. Big moment here. No, my God, that was rather unfortunate. Ah, thank goodness. Whew, just wipe the sweat off my brow because this game is actually getting crazy close. Um, all right, I should swing in here so I don't get shot so much. Hopefully, I don't get hit. Oh my lord, my hit points have just disappeared with that T40 and the AC. Mm, that's not good. Um, maybe we should try and fall back. Can you fall back from there or not? I'm not sure. Maybe that was a bit of a... Uh, I hate it when people tell me to fall back when, when I'm in a position where... Mate, I clearly can't fall back from here. What are you talking about, bruv? It ain't gonna happen, you know? Um, I'm just trying to look out for him. Okay, my team have kind of come back into this. It's a bit weird because we're still down on hit points, but I guess that's because they got a lot of it on the Stug. There's also a Matilda LVT that's destroyed a tank, but hasn't been spotted. So, um, he could be anywhere. A bit of a, a wild card of the enemy lines. So we're up to three kills, and we've done a very respectable combined game for a tier five tank. This position just so much more friendly now for the heavies. Wow, that stag hound came around. Okay, I think I have to set up and try and snipe this Staghound as he comes after me. It's a very dangerous tank, and most players who are playing the new British Wheeled Mediums, which is what the Staghound is, are usually quite good players as well, so we're going to have to watch out for them. I don't have the best of view range, so I'd probably have to wait here for the Churchill to spot him. But there's a Matilda LVT going after our T-3485. I'm in a precarious situation here. Like, part of me wants to try and engage the, st the Staghound with the uh, Churchill... Three. The other part of me worries that the Matilda LVT is going to try and get the T-3485M. Maybe the T-3485M holds that position? Yeah, I think he will. He's only got two more shots to be able to deal with him. I'm pretty sure this Staghound's going to come in and try and attack the Churchill while they're spotted. He's also probably a little bit worried about me. I really hope I haven't misjudged the situation and that T-3485M is actually going to take on that Matilda. Again, okay, this is just what I wanted. Perfect. 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 Nice. It's actually worth shooting wheels on this tank, but never mind. We got him. Okay. T-3485 dealt with his problem. Now I can venture on. Should we try and invite someone for a Brothers in Arms medal? We can't. No opportunity. Wow, did you see that? 36 down slope. While this tank hasn't had its speed buff, spoilers, the next two tanks I'm going to be playing, the Churchill 7 and the Black Prince have. Okay, let's tell this Churchill 3 I'm going to help him here. Um, Churchill 3 gets a couple of good shots in. Three good shots in. Wow, that was some good hits. I can actually take a hit here for the Churchill 3. So, maybe. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Maybe the Churchills can be able to uh, to come back into this. All right, there's the Stug. I'm just going to come around the corner and take a hit because I can take at least one. And that will allow my Churchill to... Oh. Well, I was going to say, get the frag. But, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't to be beautiful. That one might be the thumbnail. Oh my god, you know, f full professional here. Not only destroying a third of the enemy team in the newly buffed Churchill 1, but also posing at the end of the battle so that we can have that glorious beautiful, beautiful YouTube thumbnails. Okay, good stuff here. Churchill managing to finish top on damage, second on experience. Um, second on experience, of course, to the Churchill 3, which actually gets 50% more experience than we do at that tier. Uh, didn't fire any gold rounds, I don't think, this game. Either that or I have them lying around. I'm going to boost that because I'm not going to be playing too much World of Tanks today. All right, that was the Churchill 1. Now we're going to be playing in the Churchill 7. So this is basically just a bigger, better version of the Churchill. Wargaming have actually made some substantial buffs to this tank that I have on my other monitor here that I can tell you about. So... Wargaming have buffed the top speed limit from 20 to 25. That's a 25% increase. Now, while when they did that on the Turtle, it turned the Turtle into the best tier 8 premium tank, I think, now, along with the BZ176, in all honesty. This vehicle suffers with regards to its power-to-weight ratio. Its power-to-weight ratio is just over 9, which means that even though they've buffed the top speed limit, that doesn't mean anything if you don't have the grunt in the engine to be able to achieve it. And it really doesn't mean anything when you also have to play against tier 8 tanks. This could be brutal. I'm, I've am i got two builds on this vehicle. One durability with a gun rammer and a turbo. And one vents with 
turbo and coated optics. Honestly, if I could have picked any build for this map, I would have taken gun ram events and durability device because I don't really think I need the turbo. I'm definitely going to take the durability device so we can try and keep our tracks on. It's just going to be like... Uh, oh, it's just going to be a, a hard one as to whether we're going to be able to truly support our allies here. Interestingly, this map, we can see the encounter now. Previously, we spawned over here in encounter, which encouraged everyone to attack down the east. Now with encounter, you actually spawn in the middle and you have a choice of going down the east or the west. We're going to have done the same thing with assault as well, uh, which I think I mentioned in one of my other videos when I was playing the British Wield mediums. Okay, so how have Wargaming buffed this tank? Well, they've buffed the top speed limit up to 25, so now with a turbo, you can see we can go at like 28, 29 with this tank, which is lovely. They've also buffed the reverse speed from 12 to 14, and they've buffed the aim time from 2.3 to 2 seconds, so you can be fully aimed in between your shots. The movement dispersion has been buffed from 0.18 to 0.16, so it's kind of like the equivalent of a rotation device on the vehicle with regards to gun handling, and 0.16 on the turret to 0.14 on the turret. So the gun handling is not too shabby now. All right, so the Churchill 7. Uh, again, like the Churchill at Tier 5, it has vulnerability with its tracks, where not only can it take tracking damage, but it also can take damage as well, which is absolutely awful. Oh no, that's really not very good. It's like the worst tank that ever could appear here. I'm not going to be able to pen him even with my gold rounds as well. Even though I've got 208 millimeters of gold pen, it's not going to do the business against that ISM, unfortunately. Gosh, tier 6 heavies having to fight tier 8 heavies always feels as if it's just not really very fair. But that is the way of World of Tanks. And if we can manage to try and flank, then we might still be able to do something. Okay, what we need is somebody with a bigger gun and better hit points to start to progress. If he fires, I'm going to try and progress in. Oh, there's a T-44 as well? Are you kidding me? I think I have to progress, though. Oh, no, no, not with the, not with the 6, six uh, not with the 40 TP out on the side. Okay, let's turn this British boat around, and then I'm going to try and flank from the side, I guess. One thing that's interesting about Ensk is you see how this building sticks out more? That means that you can actually sneak your way in along here, usually without getting absolutely nailed from the back, or at least you've got a bit of a safety net, and it forces them further around the corner. And so from this angle, I should be able to help this 274A to A out a little bit more, and that's really what I have to do. If I don't help my allies, I, my job as a Tier 6 is to support the Tier 8s, and if I'm not supporting the Tier 8s, before they die, then the game is over. I feel like I've already lost this game because I wasn't involved in the battle early enough. That's 122 millimeter. That's interesting. So he's got the 122. Is this guy going to go after me now? He is. I see. I can harass him now, and then he'll turn his attention towards me. Hopefully the tiger goes in and goes after this guy. I'm not sure I want to take the hit here. I'll go down to a one shot. Nice. ISM just fired, so let's go after this guy again. I'm actually going to advance now to get his side while firing at him on, on the move. And we set him on fire. Let's go. Maybe we can still win this. Okay, let's see if we can help our um, friend out. So they're going to be taking the north very quickly. Um, I have to go in after this T-44 fairly fast. There could be a comet on my side. There's no comet on my side. We have to go kill this T-44 together. Okay, let's go. Let's hound down this T-44. He's using the 122. Hopefully he bounces. Maybe he does. Oh, lovely, he does. I'm going to repair that just so I can get my gun round on him a little bit quicker. Hopefully my team finish him off. Bro, Tiger. Hello, Tiger. Hello, Tiger. Hello, Tiger. Please don't let him shoot me again. Oh, no, he did it. Cool. Okay, so there's a Comet and a T-3485M over here. Nice to get a shot in, avoid the damage. Okay, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to win this one, boys and girls, but I'm going to give it my British best. And how do Brits deal with problems? Well, in this kind of a scenario, I think we just have to keep driving at things until they hopefully die. Uh, unfortunately, I might drive myself into a horrible crossfire here, but what can you really do? Is he reversing, or is that him driving straight? It's him driving straight. It's just me and a tiger now against the world, and unfortunately, even though they buffed the speed limit of this tank, it's still not enough to be able to get this guy as one. Oh, the Comet has my butt. That's that's the tracking and the damaging from the back as well, which is a little bit of a pain. All right, well, I guess all I can do now is try and just get some dignity damage at the end of the game. Because this isn't going to be a win. Luckily, reverse side scraping is actually pretty efficient in a vehicle like this. Right up until they get your side. Come on, Tiger, we got this. We go down kicking and screaming, right, my dude? This guy's got terrible damage per minute, actually. If I can get another fire... I mean, I'm still going to lose, but... I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. 
Oh, that was a really bad shot. My bad. If I can get this guy's side. What's that? My engine and my track at the same time? No! Comet's got me. Oh, he missed. Maybe one more shot. Oh, the Comet bounced again. I got another kill. No way. What's this Comet doing? Bro, kill me already. Are you trolling? What? Ouch! I can't believe we went down kicking and screaming so hard. I, I can't believe I bounced those two rounds from the side of the Comet. We ended up doing 3,300 damage. And this really shows you what the British tanks are good for at these mid-tiers. They're brawlers. They've got high damage per minute, so get a gun rammer on. Uh, and they've also got half decent hit points. So I think the durability device kept me in it to be able to do so much more this game. And also kept my tracks on. And remember, as I said, one of the biggest vulnerabilities of these vehicles is when you get shot in the tracks, you take damage as well. Uh, because the hull goes, uh, the tracks go over the hull. And so by using a durability device, that means that you're not isolated or locked down by your opponents so much. So unfortunately, we don't get a high caliber in that game. The 122TM was the one who got the high caliber, the tank that we shut down. Otherwise, that would have definitely been an ace tanker. We got 978, meaning that we finished uh, in the top three on the on the winning team with regards to experience. Although I did pay for it. I spent 68,000 credits on ammunition. But oh, well. Oh, well. We gave it a good go. Shout out to the tiger on my team, Le Croco, for um, fighting with me there. 46% win rate player. Did uh, the second best on our team. Would it be nice to see our tier 8s do a little bit more. So that's the Churchill 7. It's definitely buffed with regards to its gun handling. I was able to snap my shots in. Definitely buffed with that aim time. I was able to fire faster against the targets. And definitely buffed with regards to that top speed limit. Now, ladies and gents, we're going to be playing in the Black Prince. And this vehicle has received a similar amount of love to the Churchill 7. But not only have Wargaming improved the gun handling and the mobility of this vehicle, they've also improved the firepower. Now it has 2,000 base damage per minute, which makes it one of the best with regards to its... Uh, it's tier 7 heavy prowess. But unfortunately, even in a matchup like this, 2000 DPM doesn't feel that special. So in addition to the rate of fire buff, the aim time has been improved from 2.3 to 2 seconds. The gun handling has improved, been improved when moving from 0.16 to 0.14. So it's like you've got third stabs on the tank almost. And the turret reverse dispersion has been halved. Accordingly, wouldn't recommend using vert stabs on this tank anymore. Get yourself a gun ram events, durability, possibly even a turbo as well. So now I've got a tough decision. I'm actually not going to use the turbo on this map because I, I thoroughly think that having kind of like the vents for the extra view range and rate of fire will help me out more. And one thing that's interesting about this vehicle is because this one actually has a good power to weight ratio, it means that it will be able to achieve that top speed limit even going slightly up slope. So unlike its predecessor, the Churchill 7, which really suffers with regards to its power to weight, you could give the Churchill 7 like a top speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour and it would never reach it unless it was going down the slope. However, this vehicle with its power to weight ratio of over 12 and a half means that you are actually able to achieve those top speed limits. And so I would recommend on large maps uh, where the engagements aren't all in a small area like this one, I feel, that put a turbo on this tank and you'll actually be able to reach the front. So this tank actually looks pretty scary now. 1,650 hit points and a far, really good damage per minute for tier 7 and 239 millimeters of gold pen. Apart from the tank's horrible alpha damage of 150. But then again, you know, something like a T29 does okay with 240. But then again, 240 is quite a lot more than 150. As long as you're actually firing on reload, just like you saw with the, uh, the previous two games, it doesn't really matter. One thing that's nice about this matchup is you notice how all of the high tier tanks uh, are like glass cannons, like the G-Saw and the M5355. That means that I don't really have to worry about there being any big brawling brawls, brawler, uh, bruising brawlers that are going to be out in front of me. Unfortunately, this T29 is in a great hold down position. It's a very intimidating prospect to have to deal with right now. I'm hoping that somebody will try and help me. If he's shooting down on me, he's most likely going to absolutely murder the top of my tank from up there. I feel like I've got to take a risk anyway for him. Yeah, there you go. There's the tracks coming off and being damaged as well. That is the biggest weakness, undoubtedly, of the Black Prince. And unfortunately for me, this guy's using the higher alpha damage gun, which means that he's going to hit two shots for every shot that I hit uh, worth of damage. 
Okay, so... Oh man, if I could just lock this guy's tracks down though, I could get him. He doesn't look like he's using a durability device. Okay. These are not the trades we're looking for. Oh gosh. So instantly I'm making... I'm making black... I'm gonna ask this guy for some help. I'm making Black Prince faux pas 101, aka I'm not using the enhanced damage per minute that this vehicle has. I don't think this guy's going to be able to poke forwards. What is it, just an AMX and a, T30, a T32 over here? You know what, I'm going to go after this AMX. Hopefully I can just, just go after his hull. Damage per minute, baby. Should have hit his tracking shot there. What's they, what are they doing? Well, they're having a go at each other. I'm not going to complain. What happens when a high DPM tier 7 goes after a... Oh, he's got me. He's got me, boys and girls. He locked me down. Maybe I can just track him and hold him in place and try and survive this. Oh, I got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Oh, tense, tense, tense. I would love it if this T-832 gets taken out here. Ah, oh, he got me. My bad, my bad, my bad. Although, we did do 2,000 damage while brawling. So it wasn't actually too bad. And it looks like my team might end up being able to win this. So, this really shows you how important alpha damage is in World of Tanks. You can have all the DPM, like the 2,000 damage per minute this tank has. But it doesn't mean anything if you can't trade effectively. So what that means with the Black Prince is you really have to just go all in against your opponents and hope that you're fighting one on one against like against that AMX. And we were absolutely destroying the AMX as soon as it turned into a fight against the T-832. We, I still felt like I fought fairly well against the T-832. But as soon as he can start to shoot you once in your track or lock you down and fall back around the corner, that's where the Black Prince is still going to suck. But, you know what, it's not a bad result for the Black Prince, and I'll take two out of three wins today. So my big tips for these British mid-tier heavies, which I think they are competitive now, is get yourself a turbo for large maps, or if you want just an all-purpose build for them, just get yourself like turbo gun rammer and durability, and then just be aggressive against your opponents. Don't be afraid, just go all in, as long as there's only one tank, and just keep grinding them out. Just focus on penetrating your shots, trying to angle your armor at roughly about 30 degrees, wiggling a little bit, trying to put pressure on them and try and get them to miss. But just focus on making sure that you make your shots count. And if you do that, then you should be able to outtrade your opponents. So we managed to finish third on damage, third on experience. It's not a bad result. And we managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a what possibly before that battle was a 57% win rate player, now a 56% win rate player. And he deserves it as well for pushing that AMX around the corner. What were you doing? Don't pick on the tomatoes, even if they don't make pixel perfect plays. So all in all, the British mid-tier heavy tanks have been substantially buffed, and now is a great time to go down this line, because it's not painful in any area. When you get to the Carnarvon, it's amazing. It's a fantastic tier 8 high damage per minute heavy. The Conqueror is one of the best tier 9 heavies. And the Super Conqueror, now with the Chieftain and 279E and the VZ55 all being nerfed in the same patch, arguably is the best all-purpose tier 10 heavy tank. And so now is the best time, probably since 2012, to get stuck into British heavies in World of Tanks. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about all of the British heavies inside World of Tanks. The mid-tier ones, do you like the buffs? Do you think they're enough? Do you think that they're not enough? And how do you see these tanks performing on the battlefield? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.